Buongiorno, buongiorno. Oggi rivista nella colori acquarello. O oh, in English. Good morning, good morning. Um, today I am reviewing a new watercolor paint by Nilla Colori, an Italian brand, a very particular Italian brand. Hence my <laughs> paint to um, try and say a little Italian sentence. <laughs> I, I translated on Google, so if it's not correct Italian, then please report to Google, not to me. <laughs> Okay, so what do we have here? This is a really special watercolor paint, period. A lot can be said about it and I've been... I got this set of paint um, last fall or last winter. It, it's quite a while but I've been... I've been looking for things to say about it because it is such a special paint that there are pluses and there are there are pros and cons about this paint and still I like this paint very much so I wanted to bring you a, a full story a round story so well I did some research I um, I practiced with it and um, I am ready now to do a full review on this paint so what I got um, was a really wonderful package of paint it hardly ever happens but um, I was sent um, this information with um, about the paint, the colors that they they have, and the colors they have are really special. Let's start first with this beautiful wooden box. I mean, this just draws you in, right? It's a beautiful way of packaging your paint. So when you shove open the lid, on the inside you will find um, a little color chart. Um, but then on the inside here are correspondingly the colors which are also in Italian just let me say it out loud for now <laughs> here we go it's giallo di reseda which is um, um, a yellow um, a glazing yellow by the way rosso di robbia which is um, well garant red the reason I am hesitating a little bit is that um, there is a little bit inconsistency in the names. I've been, um, I've been. Um, it's one of the things that were was a bit hard about reviewing this. Um, then there is Magenta di Coginiglia, Coginiglia, um, which is real cochineal magenta. Then there is Blue Maya, Blue Maya in Italian. That's easy, main blue. Then there's Ocra Gialla, yellow ochre. Ocra rossa, red ochre, ombra bruciata. I think it's bruciata, bruciata. Ombra bruciata, ombra bruciata. To me, both sound Italian, but I don't speak Italian. So, well, um, that is burnt umber and grigio di pine. Grigio di pine, grigio di pine, grigio di pine. Well, paint grey, anyway. Um, so, these are the colors that are in this set. And then, they also sent me, now I have to look on the back, um, still, um, of this I don't have, still the grain yellow, and of that I don't have the Italian name right now. Then there is Genuine Indigo, Indaco Naturale, then there is Mayan Green, and then there is um, the Carbone di Vite, the Vine Black. So um, it's um, Vine Black is like the charcoal, like burnt char burnt um, burnt vines. Um, anyway, so this is what I got. So at the time, this was their complete set, but on Instagram. I've already noticed that um, they are still looking for new pigments to use in their um, collection. Right, so they sent me a, um, a hand-painted um, color chart which looks really nice. It's done, it's printed on, on good paper. There's a lot of information. I love reading it out loud in Italian because it sounds so great. <laughs> 
Um, and then here is an overview of the colors and I will swatch for you in a minute later and a little bit of information about this page also in Italian but you know I think to me that's kind of the um, the charm of a product um, it doesn't all have to be f um, aimed at the world and it doesn't all have to be English um, keep it this way I like it um, right so then I don't remember no this this they also sent along with it which is an overview of the colors and the pigments they used and a little bit of information and I looked up um, some information about this um, paint that I'm going to share with you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch this paint and tell you a little bit about it um, well not as I go because I can't do two things at the same time <laughs> But, I'll swatch it as I got it, right? So I'll first start with um, the set. Hold on, I need a brush. It's the only thing I forgot to, to grab. So this is the, the Weld Yellow, the Gialla di Reseda. And as you can see, I've already used quite a bit of paint. Let me zoom in just a little bit. I don't want to zoom in too much because I've noticed that the camera sometimes goes out of focus when I do that. So Gialla di Reseda. What I noticed about this paint is that it's beautiful, beautifully transparent and um, I love it. It's a really beautiful glazing colour. Um, Bright and very transparent yellow is their description of this paint and <coughs> <coughs> sorry, pardon me. That's absolutely true. Um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. So then we move on to the other colour in the set which is Rosso di Robbia. And as you can see this is not a very bright red. That was one of the first things I noticed about this set that the colors are not necessarily bright but if you look closely I hope you can see that I will try and zoom in a bit just for the occasion um, but as you can see the pigments they just nestle in the, that's why I used paper with a little bit of texture, the pigments just nestle down in the deeps of the texture of, the, of this paper. And that is something I really, really like. Um, I don't, you don't see that a lot in reds. And I like that it happens with this one. Okay, I'll zoom back out for you because I really would like to keep sharp image okay so then we move on <laughs> to cochinilla to this is called magenta di cochinilla and this is one that vegetarians and vegans won't like this is the real cochineal magenta and real cochineal magenta is made of a big bunch of small insects, little bugs, very little bugs, and um, they are crushed to death basically. And then, by pressing the um, um, the hard bodies, the color comes out. So this is not an an animal friendly color. Um, I have never owned this pigment for real so I was really glad to have this pigment because I was always very curious about it I'd read about it and I'd always thought you know how bad can it be um, but yeah well it, it's something you have to um, consider for yourself if you um, if you feel you want to own that color yes or no there are other considerations to take into mind uh, to take into account that I will talk about later but this is like 
the real original thing. So I can imagine that there are people out there who want to paint with old pigments who will love this brand because they are they are doing pigments that other brands are no longer carrying. There may be reasons for that, but more about that later. So now we move on to the Mayan Blue. And again, this is not a bright blue. It's the lightest blue in the range, but as you can see, it's not a light blue. However, I love, love, love this color. It's got a, a grayish um, undertone, and um, at first, the first time I did a color chart with these colors, I thought, hmm, it's not very bright, although I have to see the, on this paper, especially cochineal looks rather bright. Um, but in a minute I'll get back to you, why oh, I still love this paint very much and think it's quite fantastic. So now moving on to the yellow ochre which is, I think, what any yellow ochre should be, only it didn't come off the pan as easily as my as other brands that I have. And as you can see, they remain very transparent. I love that. So then we move on to the ochre, by the way, is not as intense, the yellow ochre, as, um, as other brands that I have. I feel that with this, um, the Nila Colori paints, I need, they are really good for transparent, and um, when you like to paint in transparent layers. Um, my own style is quite bold in use of paint. So, I always try to lay down the paints in thick layers and um, that's just my own glitch you know it's it's not something you must do it's what I do but that meant that with this paint I did need quite a bit of um, work in the pans to get the paint out and to lay down a firm layer of paint to make it bold so this is the burnt umber and it's it's less saturated, I think, than other burnt umbers that I have. But I still like it because this would be a perfect paint to use in um, any painting where I where I'd be painting trees. Um, now we move on to paint grey. And I think it's a lovely color, a lovely paint gray. It really is kind of grayish blue or bluish gray, whichever you like the two. So then we move on to the other colors that I got and that do not, were not in the set. I will, I will glue them in later because I really want them in that set. Um, we have the Steel de Grain and I've been looking um, this is a semi-opaque paint which um, those of you who know me and who know my work you know I love Indian yellow and I love um, all these golden kinds of yellow and that's what this is. This is one of the most beautiful yellows that I've ever, ever had. I love it. I'm trying to make it even more intense, <laughs> just to see what happens. Okay. And then we move on to the real indigo. And those of you who know me, they know I love indigo and this is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. And by the way, the workability, the way this paint behaves when you paint with it is, is wonderful. And um, this indigo is the most intense of the colors that's in the, set, that's in the collection. 
you don't need to get much paint you don't need to work the pan at all to get a lot of color of it um, then there was the um, this is Mayan green that needs a lot more work but I have some other Maya greens and they also need a lot of work so much more transparent much less intense but a really really pretty color and I don't know if you can see what I noticed straight away with this paint with the brand is that many of the colors or all the colors seem to I don't know if I would call it granulate but this is divine black, carbon black. I don't know if I would call this granulating. As you see the paint does need some, many pans need a bit of work. But this paint, I don't know what it is. I don't know if, if these pigments are somewhat granulating or it's not like um, classic granulation that I'm used to from other brands. It's, um, but I think you can see that there is texture in the paint on the paper. Um, you can see the texture of the paper in in the in the um, elegant shifts of color in in every swatch and when it dries up it becomes even more clear I'll show you the first swatch that I made right underneath so zooming in on that one um, and you can see this is paper with a fine grain and um, I think you can see that you know um, that the colors are not flat they are alive and that's what I really really like about this paint okay so um, after having swatched this I want to tell you a little bit about um, the um, light fastness of this paint um, there is um, one color that I'm um, not really sure um, the booklet says or the, the um, information leaflet says this is a 4 out of 5 light fast, the, the weld yellow, the giallo di reseda. Um, but when I looked up the pigment number, I read that it was not very light fast at all. So I'm not really sure. This is something I would have to try out and leave some paint B for a while to be able to review that. Um, so then there is the uh, steel de grain which is said to have um, the least uh, light fastness of all these colors by Nila Calori themselves and I found that confirmed this color was very quickly replaced once new colors came up um, in history this NY14 pigments always been used for uh, stuff like wallpapers etc but they would very soon um, lose their bright yellowness and um, people they would they would tend to become brownish or sometimes lose their color at all depending on the circumstances so once there was a replacement for it they quickly replaced it um, all other colors are given a 4 out of 5 or a 5 out of 5 light fastness rate by uh, Nilo Colori um, when I did some research I noticed that um, for the larger part um, the uh, pigment information I found agrees that it's pretty okay um, light fast wise it's just that for me personally if I would be doing a uh, commission I would not use the steel to grain and replace that with a much more modern and light fast pigment however that being said I do know that there are some people out there who paint um, who like painting in old techniques and um, who like painting um, ancient themes for example and then I think you will find this set of colors truly amazing because like this is sort of the real deal in that respect um, so that's a little bit about that 
um, as I said, I love how this paint works. I painted a couple of cards with it, a couple of postcards, and, well, I sent them away. <laughs> it was quite silly, because I needed to do this review first, but I have been working on this um, some time ago, and I will show you that in close-up. And I painted that with Nila Calori only. And as you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit more and I hope it's still sharp image. It's very tough to see for me on the little screen of my um, camera. But as you can see, especially here in the red, which is painted with the Rosso di Robbia, you can see, and also here in the Cochineo, that there is a lot of, well, I will still call it granulation, although it feels a bit different than granulating pigments. A granulating pigment will, will granulate everywhere and with this pigment, with these pigments, I sort of also have a feeling that they are not exactly granulating but, you know, that some will just sink down, that they're a bit heavy maybe. Um, maybe that is the characteristics of granulation but this is not granulation as I'm used to. Um, however, that being said, I absolutely love this is not finished this is a work in progress it's uh, an art journal page that I once started and I had to leave it be because you know life got in the way and I first wanted to finish it that's why I'm late with my review as well uh, but then you know other things I, ha I had to do other things and now I decided to just um, leave it be and show you and I also wanted to show you that here I apply quite a few layers and what I love about this paint is that with every layer um, the color becomes more intense, uh, more depth, there is more more life in it. And that you could say is normal for a, a watercolor paint but with this paint particularly, um, I don't know, it just it feels like a more organic sort of paint. Um, and here the, the this is sort of becoming a snail. I turned out to be a snail and here I mixed up quite a few colors and what I noticed is it doesn't really go muddy so it's clean pigments and well they work fantastic so I look forward to finishing this page anyway and um, show you what it looks like I will do that someday on my blog or my social media so now let's get back to the colors so these are the colors that I've just painted for you. The swatch is almost right, except for the black. And, well, as you can see, for example, here in the indigo. Um, no, this is the paint's gray. Sorry, this is the indigo. This is the paint's gray. As you can see, I would not really call this texture granulating. Although, well, on the other hand. But, you know, this applies to quite a few colors. I can't see it in the yellow because it, I applied it rather lightly no and I don't see it in this swatch the yellow seems rather even of color but then it's in Rosso di Robbio Magenta di Cogeniglia the Maya blue not as much um, the yellow ochre not as much the red ochre I do see it I see in the in the burnt amber in the paints gray I don't see it in the other yellow the still the gray and yellow um, I do see a little bit of weird effect in the indigo going on um, I'll tap on that um, I see some specks of paper color peeping through it which is quite never had that before with um, a watercolor but I love it because for some reason this color um, give me an ancient feeling to it I don't know if you get what I mean but sometimes you have that with a paint um, it's a beautiful effect and due to its intensity only one layer is enough so you can still keep the effect then there is the uh, Mayan green which also has the same effect and then the vine black so I don't know why that is but that's what it is um, I also have a mixing chart to show you but there is a few remarks I want to make before I do that um, I have a feeling that the pigment particles are um, that could be a bit heavy. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not an expert on that um, in that field. But um, it might explain. Or I don't know. But something in this paint creates these sort of dry river beds where you can see the flow of the water or something. I don't know what it is. I love it. But that's something to take into account. The paint lifts off the pants very easily. Um, 
but uh, sometimes you have to work a bit harder to get a lot of paint out of the out of the pans if you want to get intense colors the colors are all very transparent and they're all flowing um, I even found the not so transparent the semi opaque colors like the um, red ochre and the um, mine blue and the steel de grain I found them rather transparent nonetheless even though they say it's not transparent I would not I would they say it's semi transparent but I think they're more towards the transparent than towards the um, they are less no they are more transparent than semi transparent colors of other brands um, sometimes when you dilute the paint when you have a lot of water on the pans the it the paint feels a little bit like jelly a little bit gooey um, so then you need a little bit more water to get the flowing consistency and then the colors uh, can be a bit light um, but that is perfect for glazing now I think you find the same um, characteristics in Sennelier for instance which also remains very transparent um, although Sennelier might be a little bit more intense in colors um, there is no if you if you're going to buy a set there is no really bright red or bright blue in it that's something to take into account and um, what I also noticed is that this paint dries rather slowly compared to other brands that I have and I don't know if that's due to um, a lot of gum arabic or, or, or well, a lot of gum arabic in it I don't know but um, that's something that I noticed about this paint mm. just a little sip of my tea before I move on <clears throat> and then we have and I'll zoom out for you you know I have to be honest when I first first time I made a color chart like this I was a little like hmm the colors are not very um, bright and well yeah, as I said in the beginning of the video that is my own perk my own glitch I love intense colors I don't necessarily use watercolors the way watercolorists do um, but then this is what I did I zoom a little bit more I made a mixing chart and here is when I fell absolutely in love with the paint there is no bright red and there is no bright blue so what can you expect from a set like this well my favorite season is fall autumn and what I see here is beautiful warm autumn colors and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you because I want to show you what I did also one of my perks I think um, here is the diagonal of the original colors <clears throat> and then on this side on this corner on you know below the diagonal I simply mixed the colors previous to um, to painting them and then on the others on the top on the top side of the diagonal I dropped a cut, um, the, the other color into it so I let the, the paint do its work and that really resulted in quite a few lovely um, characteristics of this paint I believe um, the flow is very good of this paint but still because of the um, the pigments the way they behave you can see that they sort of bloom out so they don't flow out evenly they bloom out and um, as you can see here where you can see this is uh, what this is the paper is Schoenes Harmer Aquarelle number no. 10 um, and it's a fine grain yeah it's fine grain and as you can see here you know the pigment really sinks and I would call this granulation still because it's not really granulation and yet it is um, I love this I love how this behaves, but I also love how you get these textures in it so if you are if you're painting flowers for example 
um, in a very free style then I think this paint will be lovely in 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 creating these sort of well bloom like flowers um, and also what I love for instance is the way the colors mix it's so beautiful the wonderful peach color that you get from mixing the giallo di reseda with the rosso di robbia is gorgeous it's it's wonderful and also here we go we have the, the giallo di reseda mixed with the cochineal i mean you get this sort of um a potter's pink almost or like a brownish pink and we would call it all out rosa old pink and um, I love it and I see quite a few colors like this one um, I don't know if you know shadow violet by Daniel Smith or the moon glow well those are colors those are paints where two pigments have been mixed um, usually a, a granulating one and a non granulating one and they mix the colors in such a way that you can see, see a shift between the colors well I promise you that this is not Daniel Smith these but you do see a shift in colors you do see an effect happening um, between the blues and, and the green and the reds you can see it here as well slightly um, here you can see you know there's darker there is more purple and more blue areas so I love that I love it when that happens because to me that makes the paint feel alive because I can't really predict what's going to happen. Every time I mix another color, you can see something happening that you don't know up front. And um, I quite like that. I quite enjoy that in the process of my paintings. So, what would I say about this paint? I would recommend it. It's gorgeous. Um, if you work with artist grade paints, I would uh, recommend that you look into the pigments before you buy um, although I personally love this 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 whole chart of colors with the warm colors and I can really imagine that you know this will take a hold of me throughout the year in creating a new set of paintings um, so all in all I'm really fascinated by anyone who's courageous enough to start a new watercolor brand and to say hey I'm giving everyone the big finger because all the pigments that are no longer used I'm gonna pick them up and I'm gonna make them into some unique paints that you don't get in other places anymore or hardly um, so well big thumbs up Nilo Colori grazie and um, I love it very much so I hope you enjoyed this review I hope you enjoyed the discovery of this brand and um, well you might find it worth to take a look at their site I've got the links um, to uh, handprint the pigment information to the pigment information of the other site that I don't remember right now put it all down here and I've got a link to the Nilla Colori Nilla Colori website for you so that you can check it out for yourself thank you for watching and i hope to see you soon again bye